Welcome back. In this module, we embark on a journey into the realm of data analysis, where we unlock the power of data to derive meaningful insights and make informed decisions. As we continue our exploration of data literacy, we'll delve into the essential techniques, tools, and methodologies used to analyze and interpret data effectively. What is the difference between data analysis and literacy, or are they the same? Data analysis and data literacy are closely related, as they both involve the ability to understand, work with, and make sense of data. However, data analysis uses various techniques and tools to extract insights, patterns, and trends from data. It involves collecting, cleaning, and transforming data, as well as using statistical and analytical methods to understand the data. Data analysis can be used for a wide range of purposes, including business intelligence, research, and decision-making. Data literacy, on the other hand, is the ability to understand and work with data in an effective and efficient way. It involves having the knowledge and skills to collect, understand, analyze, and communicate data effectively. Data literacy also encompasses understanding data governance, data privacy, data security, and the ethical use of data. Data literacy is a necessary foundation for data analysis, as it enables individuals and organizations to understand the data they are working with and to make informed decisions based on that data. Data literacy also allows individuals and organizations to understand the limitations and biases of their data and to use the data effectively and responsibly. Let's dive deeper into the data analysis process. This process typically involves several steps. The first step, define the problem and objectives. Clearly define the problem that you are trying to solve and the objectives of the analysis. This will help to guide the data collection, analysis, and interpretation of the results. Secondly, collect and prepare the data. Collect the data from various sources, such as transactional systems, external data sources, and surveys. Then, prepare the data for analysis by cleaning and transforming it to ensure that it is accurate, complete, and relevant. Then, explore the data. Explore the data by visualizing and summarizing it to understand the distribution of data and identify patterns and outliers. This step can include creating histograms, scatter plots, and other visualizations. Fourth, model the data. Use statistical and analytical methods to understand the data. This can include using techniques such as regression analysis, clustering, and classification to extract insights and patterns from the data. Step 5. Interpret the results. Interpret the results of the analysis and draw conclusions based on the data. Communicate your findings to stakeholders in a clear and concise way, using data visualizations and other tools as appropriate. Step 6. Communicate and collaborate. Communicate and collaborate with other team members and stakeholders to validate the findings and come up with actionable insights. Step 7. Implement the insights. Take action based on the insights and conclusions derived from the data analysis. This can include making decisions, creating new products, or improving existing processes. And lastly, review and monitor. Review the results and monitor the impact of the actions taken, and repeat the process as necessary to ensure continued improvement. Note that understanding the steps that are executed in the data analysis process will help significantly in understanding how you can work with, and benefit from, data. Next, we discuss the data analysis tools and technologies. Many different data analysis tools are available, depending on the specific needs of the analysis, the size and complexity of the data, and the resources available. This course will consider the three most common data analysis tools, which are Excel, R, or Python, and SQL. Excel is a widely used tool for basic data analysis and visualization. It allows users to organize and manipulate data, create charts and graphs, and perform basic calculations and statistical analysis. R and Python are popular open source programming languages commonly used for data analysis and visualization. 
They offer various libraries and packages for data manipulation, statistical analysis, and machine learning. SQL, Structured Query Language, is a programming language for managing and manipulating relational databases. It allows users to extract and analyze data from a database by running queries. Note that it goes beyond the scope of this book to provide in-depth overviews of the programming languages and corresponding commands of each of these tools. From a data literacy perspective, however, it is important to recognize these tools and understand how they can be used. Let's start with discussing the first tool, which is MS Excel, Spreadsheets. This tool is everyone most likely familiar with. Excel is a spreadsheet software developed by Microsoft. It is a widely used tool for basic data analysis and visualization. It allows users to organize and manipulate data, create charts and graphs, and perform basic calculations and statistical analysis. Excel can be used for a wide range of tasks, such as organizing and analyzing data, creating budgets and financial models, creating charts and graphs, performing calculations and statistical analysis, and automating repetitive tasks through the use of macros. Excel allows users to enter and edit data in a table format with rows and columns. Each cell in the table can contain text, numbers, or formulas. Formulas can be used to perform calculations on the data, and functions can be used to perform more complex calculations, such as financial and statistical analysis. Excel also provides a wide range of visualizations and charting options, which can be used to present data in an easy-to-understand format. Excel is a powerful tool that can be used to analyze and present data, but it is also user-friendly, making it a popular choice for many businesses and organizations. It's worth noting that Excel has evolved over time, and Microsoft introduced Power Query and Power Pivot, which are additional features that enhance data analysis capabilities and allow for more complex analysis. Now we can have a look at an example. Let's say you have a spreadsheet with two columns, one is quantity, and the second one is price and you want to calculate the total cost by multiplying the quantity by the price for each item. You could use the following formula in the third total cost column. Equals quantity times price. This formula multiplies the value in the quantity column with the value in the price column for each row in the spreadsheet. This formula can be copied and pasted for all the rows in the sheet. Many other formulas are available in Excel, including functions for financial analysis, statistical analysis, and text manipulation. Other commonly used functions include count, average, max, min, if, and vlookup. It's worth noting that formulas can also include logical tests, which allow you to include conditions in your formulas. For example, you can use the if function to return one value if a certain condition is met and another value if it is not. R and Python are open source programming languages widely used for data analysis and visualization. They offer a wide range of libraries and packages that allow users to perform a variety of data manipulation, statistical analysis, and machine learning tasks. R is a programming language and software environment for statistical computing and graphics. It is widely used for data analysis and visualization in fields such as statistics, finance, and bioinformatics. R has a large user community in many packages available for data manipulation, statistical analysis, and machine learning. Python is a general-purpose programming language that can be used for various tasks, including data analysis and visualization. Python is popular for data analysis because of its simplicity and readability. It also has a large user community in many libraries and packages available for data manipulation, statistical analysis, and machine learning. R and Python can perform a wide range of data analysis tasks, including data cleaning, data visualization, statistical analysis, and machine learning. They both have a large user community and a wide range of libraries and packages available to support these tasks. 
the choice between R and Python often comes down to personal preference and the specific needs of the analysis. R is more popular in academia and scientific research, while Python is more popular in industry and software development. Let's first look at an example in the Python language using the Pandas library. In this example, we are using the Pandas library. Pandas is a software library written for the Python programming language for data manipulation and analysis. In this example, the script first imports the Pandas library. Then, it is read in a common data storage format, a CSV file. After that, it uses the head function to print the first five rows of the data. Then, it calculates some basic statistics like the mean, median, and standard deviation of a column using the mean, median, and STD functions, respectively. We will discuss these concepts in more detail in Module 3. Lastly, the script groups the data by one column using the group by function and calculates the mean of another column using the mean function. The result is a new data frame that shows the mean of the specified column for each unique value in the group column. It's worth noting that this is a basic example, and you can use more advanced functions and techniques like filtering, sorting, pivot tables, and more to analyze and summarize your data. SQL, Structured Query Language, is a programming language used for managing and manipulating relational databases. It allows users to extract and analyze data from a database by running queries. SQL is used to create, modify, and query databases. It allows users to interact with the data stored in a relational database management system, RDBMS. Some of the common tasks that are performed using SQL include creating and modifying tables, views, indexes, and other database objects, inserting, updating, and deleting data in tables, retrieving data from one or more tables using various criteria and conditions, summarize and aggregate data using functions like SUM, count, AVG, etc. Joining data from multiple tables to retrieve data from related tables. And, creating, modifying, and managing user accounts and permissions. SQL is widely used for data analysis and reporting in many industries, and it's considered the standard language for relational databases. SQL can be used with a variety of relational databases, such as MySQL, PostgreSQL, Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, and SQLite. SQL is not the only way to interact with databases, as there are other ways like NoSQL databases, which are different from traditional relational databases. They use other query languages like MongoDB, which uses MongoDB query language, MQL, and Cassandra which uses CQL, Cassandra query language. SQL can also be combined with other programming languages, such as Python. R, and Java to perform more advanced data analysis tasks. Here is an example of an SQL script that retrieves data from a database. This script is using a select statement, which is used to retrieve data from a table. The script selects three columns, column one, column two, and column three from a table named table underscore name and filters the results by a specific value of column one. The script also orders the results by column 2 in descending order. Here's another example of an SQL script that inserts data into a table. This script uses an insert statement, which is used to add new data to a table. The script inserts data into three columns, column 1, column 2, and column 3, of a table named table underscore name, with the specified values, value 1, value 2, value 3. Note that these examples are based on the SQL syntax of a specific database management system, and the syntax may vary from one DBMS to another. But the basic concepts are the same. To conclude this module, it is important to understand that being data literate does not necessarily mean being an expert in data analysis or statistics. Data literacy is the ability to understand and work with data, regardless of one's technical background or level of expertise. 
Data literacy includes understanding the basics of data, such as data types, data structures, and data quality, and using data to make informed decisions. It also includes understanding the context of the data and its limitations. Recall that a data literate person should have the ability to read and understand data, critically evaluate data and information, use data to support decision making, communicate data findings effectively, and communicate your story to the rest of the organization. In the upcoming Module 3, we will further discuss how to read and understand data and help you understand how you can quickly assess data sets. In Module 4, we will subsequently show you how to read and interpret data visualizations. Module 5 will discuss how you can use data to effectively communicate your message in the enterprise. Lastly, Module 6 will cover data ethics. In order to illustrate these examples, we will be using the Python language and libraries. We have chosen Python, as opposed to Excel, because Python is open source, vendor independent, and does not require any licenses. Everyone can start with Python for free that has access to a computer and preferably the internet. In order to be data literate, it is absolutely not necessary to understand the code block displayed in this course, but we provide them anyway for everyone who is interested. To become data literate, one should start with the basics and then build up knowledge and skills over time. This can be achieved through self-study, formal training, or on-the-job learning.